Okay, Michelle. Okay, we're just waiting for Sook to join. Hope you're ready. Hey, Mon. Hi. Hey, Sook, how are you? I'm good. Let me just turn you up a little how bit. You? Can you see me all right? This is like a really weird angle. We just... I know, so is mine actually, because I've never done one of these before. So just sorting out my camera. In my kitchen cupboard. My dad's just taken the Your... door off. Yours is a little oh. bit fuzzy. Yeah, I think that's just my cooking. Oh, is it? Yeah, and also we've got loads of light coming in, which is wonderful, but not really for cooking. <laughs> not really for filming. <laughs> but it's really lovely. So let me, uh, you're literally in the spice cupboard now. Am I? So I'm, um, that's going to fit you. So I'm going to... How are you anyway? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I didn't, I had this whole um, idea that I was going to, you know, make it all really lovely and it was all going to be really nice jello and I was going to put everything in tiny little ceramic containers. Um, that's, that's not happened. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's the beauty of real, we're real people at home doing our thing. We're in a lockdown. Everything's not yeah. going to be hunky-dory and surrounded by rose petals and stuff so that's absolutely fine no, um, I'm give myself more things to wash because i'm bloody sick of washing up so um is it mummy oj gonna help no <laughs> i've tried to get her to join i was like come and join us but she's too shy oh bless her let me just fix this because mine's a bit dodge and then mm -hmm. god i've just pulled the whole thing back in one sec <laughs> look at how <sighs> many people there are Rohit's on a conference call, but he's normally my IT help desk, as everybody knows. But anyway, we'll give it a go. There we go. Here we go. Please don't right, even set to go. Should we start? Yeah, go on then. Yeah, you, you're all set there. So everybody, yeah. just introduce us to to you. The lovely, beautiful writer, comedian, um, like. chef, chef extraordinaire today. <laughs> um, and we're going to do a chana masala. I think quite a few people are joining along to cook as well. So I hope everybody's got everything ready. I'm not going to go through the recipe um, just because it's all been there on social media and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you're coming through the big speaker in the kitchen and it's where it's off. Woo! And they've got a podcast called Drunk Women Solving Crime. Oh, wow. And they basically get get a little bit tipsy and they try and solve crimes. And it's honestly the best idea. <laughs> it's just the best podcast idea. So there you go. Hello. You're not tipsy now, are you? I've got a coffee. No. Put that to the side. Okay, so let's get our hands on the go. Because then what we'll do, we'll get, we'll get the, the masala going. Because it's the best thing about curry is obviously building the layers of a masala with the ginger garlic going in. And then once that's simmering, we can have a good old chat and, and, and interrogate you. Um, so, yeah, so we start with a bit of oil in the pan. And I've got a bit of oil and butter, just because oh, the oil prevents the butter from burning. And being Punjabi, we do like to cook with a bit of butter and ghee. Um, mm -hmm. So in that goes into the pan. I don't know if you can actually see all this happening here, but... Yeah, I can kind of see it. Um, I've not done one of these before, you see, so let's just maybe bring this a bit more here. Yeah, that's better, I think. Yeah? Yeah. You got your butter on? Yeah, I've got my oil. I've got, got oil. oil. Okay. So we've got the, pa the oil and the butter in the pan. The, the oil's going to stop the butter from burning. A um, bit of cumin seed. This is a nice, simple recipe, actually. What, what, we chose this for a reason, didn't we? Yeah. I think we both have really good memories um, about eating this recipe. And I think I just wanted to do something. We were talking about making something that people have most of the ingredients in their house and they're quite easy to get. And it's kind of, it's quite nutritious and it's quite comforting. Yeah. And it's a, and it's a dish we always cook at festivals and like Diwali yeah. or Saki, the Jana Masala. It's all on the go in the good one at home. So it's a nice auspicious occasional dish. Okay. So in with the cumin seeds, guys, I like to use whole spices, as you can see um, from the recipe I sent out, just because I, I, I just like the texture and you can actually see what well, there's a bit of cumin seed in there. So you want a nice golden brown in the cumin seed. And then when that's, once that's got to a nice golden brown, which shouldn't take too long if the heat's not too high, you start adding your fresh ginger and your garlic. Um, again, I like to see flavour my curries with lots of ginger and garlic because I think that's where all the flavour is and it really comes out once you start cooking. So the ginger's gone in. I've got frozen ginger and garlic. Oh, because brilliant. 
So you've I done do it, it in again. Tattoo. You've done it or your mum's done it, peeled a whole bag. Yeah, I'd say I've done it. My mum's done the hard work on that one. We've got yes, a second. Sir, but that's a good tip, actually. Frozen like infused ginger and garlic work great. <clears throat> okay, so you've got the ginger garlic in? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, cool, okay. So whoever's cooking along, if you just put your thumbs up and you're okay. So I'm looking for a nice golden brown with our ginger and garlic going on there, just so it's nicely sauteed through. Suck, so, you a ginger garlic girl? Yeah. All the way. All the way, I love it. Um, yeah. Yeah, you okay there? You can't see what you're cooking, but we'll, we'll show everybody at the end your culinary you delights. Nice. Honest. No, it's like this at the weekend. Yeah, please do make it at the weekend. Hi, Janina. Hi, everybody who's joined so far. I hope you're cooking along. Um, I've just been saying, so we're going to just get the spices in the ginger garlic, get our masala base going, and then once the lid's on, simmering that way, then we're going to have a lovely conversation with our lovely Sook there, who's joined today. Um, what have you been doing today, Sook? Um, not a lot, really. <laughs> you know, I hope you have one of the... Yeah, prep. That, do you know what? It's actually... Um, this has been my, the focus of my day. Is it? <laughs> I've been like, right, six o'clock, you know, you've got to get ready for this. And it's, I've actually been quite nervous about it. Do you get, I mean, obviously you've done quite a few of these now, but do you get nervous? Of course I do, can't you tell? I was like, chill, I ring you, just say, cheat talk, you okay? But it, it's, it's that sort of energy that, you know, that sort of keep adrenaline and then you get going and yeah. then it's okay. It's only me and you yeah. talking with, with a few of the people just watching in, it's okay. Do you deliver? Sorry, we don't. Just locally in Surrey. Um, has it got a nice golden brown? Yeah, I mean, obviously, my, my ginger's frozen, so mine might take a little bit longer. You know you're doing this. I know, I've um, done it. I've done it. Come on. I always say when I do recipes, this is my recipe, it's my way. You know how Indian people, we all get precious about our ways, the best yeah. way my mum knows, which is absolutely fine. So I always add, this is my way. You can obviously adapt and change to however you do, but this is how I build the layers in my, in my basic curry. And the lovely thing about this is, as you said earlier, it's such a simple dish and you can adapt it to other lentils or paneer or vegetables as well. So I've got a nice golden brown here. So I'm going in with my onions, just nicely yeah. diced. <laughs> I did prepare in a nice little dish. Very nice. You've been watching all those food programs, haven't you? I love it. <laughs> so the onions have gone in, guys. And with that, I, I did mention the recipe, you can like, use fresh fenugreek. If you do have it, which is optional, and I know in this lockdown there's not much available, but um, we're just going to add a bit of fenugreek to the onions. This just adds a nice herby flavour and this nice aroma as well. So it's going in with that. And we're going to add the salt now, a teaspoon. Obviously, adjust, adjust the salt to your own preference, but one teaspoon goes in, and that will draw the liquid out of the onions, which will help it cook quicker. So give it a nice stir, guys. Put your thumbs up if you're okay, I'm going too fast. Oh, hi, how are you? Okay, just give it a nice mix through. And you should be looking something like this. And, where are we? Chilies. How are you with chilies? Yeah, good. I've got two and a half green chilies. Okay. Yeah. My chilies at the moment aren't very hot, so I've been adding a bit more than I normally do. So I'm adding um, two teaspoons. Normally I add one and then I add a bit more if you need it. Um, yeah. And a tip I shared last time as well, if you don't like too much chilli, just get your chilli, prick it with a um, toothpick, put the chilli in whole, and then once you've got your desired heat, you can take the chilli out. And, um, yeah. Oh, okay, so how's it looking? So now we put it on a bit of a low heat, guys. And we cover it. And this is where we let our onions nicely soften. There you go, in the pan. So you've got all the things. We've put the oil, or butter, cumin seed, ginger, garlic's gone in, onion, fenugreek, sauteing that off, and now we've and, and the chili, sorry, covered it with a lid, and we're gonna leave that for a few minutes for it nicely to soften and the onion to um um you know really break down and become part of the layer in the masala. So suck. No Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this feels quite high pressured. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, I've got to think about what I've got to say. I've got to like cook at the same time. I mean, it's a dish I've cooked so many times. 
But you know, um, it's natural. You've been saying, well, you've been cooking in this, multitasking. But I know. I know it's obviously because we're on, on this doing it live. But it, it, it's you're doing a great job. I'm sure you're absolutely fine. But mm -hmm. We were just talking earlier this week as well about you saying you're using cooking through, for therapy as well through this. Yeah. You survived COVID. Well done for coming through the other side. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it really, it really took to like takes it out of you. It really, really does. So I think, um, yeah, it's nice to be in a place where I can kind of get up about and do stuff more than I could. So, um, yeah, it's all good. What it's all good. Cooking? What sort of things so, have you been cooking? I've been cooking a lot. I've been um, I think Mexican food because I don't like, because my mum takes care of the Punjabi food and that's lunch. Mom's and then I do. Mum's nervous. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and talking of mums, look who's here. Oh, Vicky's decided to join us. She decided. Sasrikal, Auntie G. Sasrikal, what's up, Tika? What's Tika? Do you see now? Yes, I'm Tika. Good, good. I'm teaching Sukhi new skills today. Can you teach me how to eat? Yes, I'm Tika. Sukhi, can you see me? Do you see me? I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. Okay. Okay. Bye, Auntie Jean. I see you. You've got a cameo. You've got a cameo oh, from her. So she's probably keeping tabs. Is she doing it all right? She'd probably say, "No, she's giving you the wrong recipe or something." I oh, know. Thank you for that, Suki. She, she must be right. quite famous, actually, from your Instagram, hasn't she? Well, I'm just seeing all the comments coming in about, yeah. like, yeah, she's definitely yes, got a you and me, Just leave her here. She could carry on with it. <laughs> um no she's do you know what she taught me how to cook but it's it's never the same like you know i was standing in the kitchen at like six seven years old um standing next to her like and she's teaching me how to cook and it's you know i follow the recipe to the t and i don't i don't measure things out and you know you kind of just chuck stuff in because you kind of you can see it by eye and things like that but it's just never the same with your mum's cooking. No, no. And they cook with love. I know it's not a cliche, or, but, you know, cooking with the senses, dill dinar, meaning for cooking from the heart. Mums do that, and it always tastes a lot better. And the other thing about yeah. measuring, maraja, that word maraja, for those who don't support yeah. but you probably will by the end of all this series. Maraja means a little bit. So when you ask your mum, how much of this goes in, they say yeah. maraja, which means it could be that much, it could be this much, yeah. you know. Then there would be, again, measure by eye. So there is, yeah. you know, so hard to write down these recipes that mums and grandmas sort of hand down. But mm. what's your mum's favourite dish that she cooks for you? Um, that, to be honest, everything's fantastic. She did bindi on the other day, okra, and that was just brilliant because she knows how to handle it so well. Like it never gets bloopy. It's always lovely and kind of like aromatic, and it's never like gluey or you know. It's always, yeah, it's just lovely. It's like really lovely. Done. And she's she's my mum's the kind of cook who. She's a perfectionist when it comes to cooking. No so, um, and, she likes every, and she likes everything on like quite a low heat and cooking it quite slowly and letting those flavours like, you know, infuse and things. And yeah, so she's just... So did she like Bindi art as a kid? I did. The only thing I didn't like, and I think we had this conversation, was Bengen or Badal oh, or Bengen. Aubergine. Like, it was the only thing that I was like, I just couldn't. I just it just there was something about the texture that just reminded me of slugs yeah like and i just couldn't i couldn't get it down me but to be honest i grew up in the country we're gonna try and change that hey, don't you find as, well, as you get older you appreciate mum's cooking more and the, the old school mm -hmm. I, I posted about um Kadubariya today which is a very old school indian oh my god you know, yeah dance, right and people are like some are like yeah i love it some are like Ugh, you know because either they don't know what it is or it is pretty old school you know something that grandma used to make and you know yeah my mum loves the buddy, like she loves that kind of food. Or she like she loves doing the buddy, you know, like um with yogurt oh, and everything. I'm just I don't understand why it's a dish. I'm like there's like no I'm like, why like am I, I don't like buddy, I don't no like it. Way. I know, I know. But, like, but my mum's like buddy jar, she loves goody jar. And me and my dad are like, Oh, like can we just have something with a bit of substance? But to be <laughs> honest, growing up, I had to eat everything because it was the kind of house where if you don't eat it, you're gonna go hungry. Yeah, and, and we didn't go hungry, look, you know. There's no way we're going hungry, Just please. give your um, masala stir to see where we're at. Have your onions nicely softened? Anybody else cooking along? Just put your thumbs up if you're on, on, on target with nice softened onions. You can just smell oh, them. Don't eat the with me. Gopri doesn't like curry. Who? Go. 
Lorna makes up your curry. I will make up my curry. We actually made it on the final of the showdown, actually. And um, it's again, it's a dish, one of those dishes you don't really cook or show because you make it by the cauldron full as well. You, and you don't make a little bit. You make everything. You feed the whole village with it, you know? Um, yeah. So I've got a nice broken down masala here. I need some nice broken down. Are you there as well, Sook, with yours? Yeah. Got, yeah? Down. Okay. In now, next we're going to go with a, a teaspoon of haldi. Which is great. Natural antiseptic. Brilliant for you. I'm just going to cook that through a little bit. Do you ever use fresh turmeric? Yeah, we've actually got some fresh turmeric. Um, I think my mum was drying it out so that we could grind it up and make our own. Yeah. Like powder. Oh, wow. Your mum's on it, man. She's proper. Oh, yeah. She's really old school like that. Like, we're, we're just, um, my dad's been building raised beds so that we can grow more of our own food and stuff. Yeah. So. You're in proper lockdown, man. You don't even need to go to the shops. <laughs> well, that's the only reason, because I was like, I bloody hate going to the supermarket. It's so stressful. <laughs> Do people recognise you in the queue? No, it's not that. <laughs> and it's just a, just a free-for-all once you get in there. Everybody socially distances outside and then you go in there. <laughs> to be fair, in this lockdown, everything's just let it go, you know what I mean? There's no eye ground whatever. It's just natural disguise. Have you done your eye for this today? Because I, I didn't and I'm really self-conscious of my eyebrows. Did, did you do it yourself? You can tell me, Louise. I haven't. I'm growing it all out. Everything's growing out. <laughs> okay, so now we've got to the stage tomatoes. You can either use fresh, luckily vine tomatoes are in season at the moment as well, pulsed up, or I've just used, I've got chopped in tomatoes here today. So we're going to add some of them in. There's my spoon. So we're ready for the tomato stage now, guys. Awesome. How's it looking, sir? All good. Everybody else? I did the prep, it's all good. Okay, so now, so we built the layers with the ginger garlic. Then we went in with the onion, let that saute down, and that's another layer. And now this layer of the tomato, the masala. So this is the masala, as we call it at home, tarka. But people buy in jars or packets or paste. We don't do that. We make every sabji, every curry has its own masala base, right? Are you the, I'm sure you must be the same in your house yes, as well. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. And you could tell a homemade versus shop bought as well. So as you can see, it's nice tomatoes gone in. So one thing I think people forget to do is taste food as well as they go along. So, oh yeah, I, you know what, I never taste. You're cutting up, I didn't hear you, darling. I never taste, no. like when I make Punjabi food, I never taste. Okay, give it. I know because it all comes in like, but give it a taste, give it a taste. Mine is a little it. bit pinch of salt, so I'm going to add that. Because <clears throat> as you know, chickpeas are quite bland, so the flavour is in the masala that, that we're going to add. <laughs> Mine's quite spicy. Is it spicy? But, um, yeah. <laughs> just like you. Um, <laughs> okay, so once you put your tomatoes in, just going to cover the lid again. Cover the pan even, and that's our masala cooking away and as you can see it wasn't that hard because a lot of your friends have joined on cooking along as well um, yeah hi lovely <laughs> Bibs, are you cooking along no um so the reason we did chili masala as we explained earlier is it's an auspicious dish we cook it for happy times you know we call it cushy then we'll it as good times family time celebration times um and it's a quite an easy dish to do and obviously as Sook said in lockdown you know people are finding it hard to buy produce and things so Sook's using tin chickpeas and I boil I soak some dry chickpeas overnight just one cup and I boil them today and you and you end it with lovely chickpeas like so as well so just to show you the two different versions exactly the same thing and um yeah so Sook, tell us a bit more about your tour and what's going on because we came and saw you the a Asian Women Mean Business Tribe you all came to see last year and this year yeah. so you came to see you Yes, I rem yes, I remember meeting you the first time, but also I remember you came to the very first night of my tour. This year? Yeah, in Slough. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that means, yeah, at the end of January. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, so the tour has obviously been um, postponed. Yeah. Uh, up until the autumn or whenever things kind of get going. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of what's going on with that. Um, people have, you know, obviously 
hopefully move their tickets to the later dates or refunds or what have you. So all of that is kind of still going on. But I guess it's just a bit of a waiting game, really, isn't it? Yeah. So um, but you've been through your journey this last few six weeks, I'd say. Obviously, you had COVID. Yeah. Um, you've been going through a lot of your own battle with your yeah. own stuff, right? I've got, no, it's been, I feel like, I, like we said on the phone earlier, like, I feel like I'm only kind of getting to a place where I feel like I'm myself again. Because yeah. I think when it happened, and also what had happened was just before lockdown, my show got pulled in Coventry about yeah. five minutes before I was about to go on. Oh, really? And so, yeah, so I was like really, I was like ready to go. And they, you know, the promoter just came backstage and was like, look, where they're going to pull the show. And I was like, oh, he's just, well, he's just having a laugh. Just, you know, because we're mates as well. I was like, oh, he's just messing around. And he's like, look, I'm not joking. Like, there's people already in the auditorium, but the venue had decided to pull it because it was the day that the announcement had been made that, you know, theatres should shut down, etc. Yeah. And so I had this, the weirdest thing happened. You know, I kind of went into shock a oh. little bit. And um, I just, I remember just being to go. And then... Yeah, because you're all ready to go. And because I travelled all the way up and, you know, and so I was, I, I think I was just in shock for like, the first couple of weeks of lockdown, I was just like, what, like, what is going on? And all of a sudden, you know, you're hearing, you know, things moving at a really rapid pace. And then you're like, you know, how do I keep my, my parents safe? And obviously like this stressful thing about COVID for me was obviously I had like a mild version of it. Um, but the worry is obviously always passing it on to like your parents or, you know, your loved ones or the people that you live with. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, so the first few weeks were kind of pretty stressful. And then um, I did that classic thing of trying to stay busy. So I was like, I, I, on, I like baked every day. I was like making muffins. I was like, I'm going to make bread rolls. Like I was just like, like making as much stuff as possible, staying as busy as possible. I was like, had decided to like declutter the whole house. You know, I dug up the garden so that we could, <laughs> we could plant things. Like, I, and this was like in the space of about oh, two domestic weeks. goddess. Yeah. And it, because I just didn't want to deal with the fact that like it felt the world was just crumbling. But I was like, no, no, we're just, I'm just going to stay busy. And I think that's good in a certain way. I think, you know, it's all right to stay busy and stay occupied. But um, then could I just stopped. Could you eat when you, were, when, you were, when you had the COVID? Could you eat? Oh, no. I can always eat. I can always <laughs> eat. Doesn't matter how sick oh. I am. I can always eat. Thank God. Um, yeah, so, but then after that, I think I took a good few weeks to just, you know, had some proper quiet time, you know, had some proper, like, quiet time. And I then, um, then I had, like, reflection time, and I was, like, think, you know, like, what does this mean? And except, and it was brilliant. And I think now that I've, I mean, obviously, when you're, in, when you're in the kind of down phase or when you're feeling low, it's not great. But when you come out of it, obviously, you feel absolutely fantastic, you know, because you've been through it. But it was, yeah, it was really kind of... Um, look, I'm really lucky, you know, I'm here, I can take care of my parents, I can, I know that they're safe, you know, I, you know, we're all fine, we're all good, um, I even got a bag of flour, like, so, like, we're good, <laughs> we're, we're golden, yeah, we're... <laughs> what do you mean, there's a big Otta flour debate, you know, people getting confused between the two things, or oh, what to oh. use, which is absolutely understandable, um, but well done, gold star for getting some flour, Thanks, babe. Top tip, always go to a smaller shop, like a corner shop or an independently owned shop. True. Have you guys got fed up of Bronte yet? Um, yeah, we were eating Bronte about three times a week and I was like, we're going to have to just stop now. Like, this is, because there used to be a treat, like, on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Have breakfast. And then we were, like, like threw caution to the wind and you're having Bronte on a Tuesday. And I was like, well, no wonder I don't know what day it is. Um <laughs> No, but we're, we're okay. We're really lucky. But I think that the battle is always within the mind, isn't it? Um, so, and, and that's the one thing that you can't kind of talk yourself out of. You kind of have to go. I, I'm a big believer in going through it. Yeah. Um, and you have, and you feel quite vocal about obviously your anxiety and depression and stuff in the past, which is brilliant, especially in our community, right? So yeah. <clears throat> thank you for raising awareness of that as well. Mm, thank you. And how are you? How are you finding it? Obviously, you're super busy. Well, it seems like it. Yeah, I mean, homeschooling isn't easy, but we're grateful we're at home. We've got a garden, you know, the kids. It's, in the morning, it's great. We've got it going. And then it's a bit for, it goes a bit pear-shaped, really. And then Rohit's working quite busy with conference calls and things like that. So, again, it's just a juggling act. But then I have to keep reminding myself and the kids, guys, this is what's happening out there. We're actually okay indoors, you yeah. know? 
Um, yeah. And um, yeah, they got to a point where they were getting fed up of oh, Indian food again. Um, <laughs> but, you know, because it's just easy, you know, with the flour and I've done stuff like that. Yeah. But otherwise, no, we're just getting on. They're, they're learning life skills, how to do a bit of cooking here and there and baking. And, it's a lovely you know, way to be just getting everything around the house and you can call it life skills. That's a, that's a great way to look yeah. at it. It, it. it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Ignore the masala stir. So what we're looking for is everybody else is cooking on a bit of oil to run free from the masala base, and always tip the water back into the pan from the lid, and you'll see a bit of oil running free. Can you see that? So yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite at that stage yet. Okay, so, so that's I'm, fine. So let it cook I'm away. Not, I might let. I might. Put, the, I might take the lid off for a little bit because I think it's a bit watery for me. Oh, oh, is it okay? That's fine. Um, yeah, so once you get a bit of oil, you can leave the lid off as well. We want the water all to evaporate, and you'll see the oil running through. That's where the masala is done. That's where the oil's done its job. It's cooked through, like I said, the cumin seed, and then the ginger and garlic, and then the onion, and then the tomato. The tomato is really going to cook down, and that's when we have a good masala, especially in our Punjabi you know, homes. We, a good masala means building those layers and, and making sure it's good and proper, you know. And that's where I say to people, you can either, you know, keep it in the fridge once it's cooled down for a week or so, put it in the freezer, and you can really do a curry in a hurry really quickly as well, so. Yeah, I tried to talk my mum into that. She wasn't having any of it. I know, because they like to cook fresh, right? Everything has to be yeah. a fresh masala. Ginger, garlic, okay, frozen. Yeah. But everything else needs to be yeah. um, fresh. <laughs> Life sucks. <laughs> Life skills. <laughs> Um, oh. my thing. um so so coming up to plans ahead can i tell you when um, you're single ready to mingle oh god um i can't even <laughs> think about that kind of stuff at the moment i'm a bit i'm a bit like yeah i feel i feel still feel like my brain is like a bit like porridge you know when you're kind of like i can't quite like see what i'm doing i do this thing now where i wake up and i'm like what do i want to do next like i don't even think about the day i'm like okay i'm gonna brush my teeth and then okay i'm gonna meditate and then okay i'm gonna have some breakfast and then that's how like i managed to actually that's a good way of managing anxiety as well when okay. you get overwhelmed so what if you you're like to manage your anxiety then actually i, I, I was asking earlier but what are um, you doing I've been meditating. I've been, um, I've been doing lots of breathing, like yeah. lots of breath work. I've been using the Wim Hof method, uh, quite, quite well known, and um, that's really helped. And I've been actually, I've been doing lots of stretching and like little bits and pieces of movement as and when. I'm not like before this. Before this happened, I was going to the gym quite regularly, and I'm going to be honest now. I bloody hate home workouts i know that people are doing joe wicks and i know that people are doing like all sorts of amazing things and they're like oh we can be in our garden we could i hate them i've tried them i hate it i hate a home workout i can't i don't hard. want to be jumping up and down on my parents like red carpet that they've got in the living room i'm like it's just not quite the same um, I do try that as well, but the workouts, are, but I do do yoga with Dibba, that's amazing. I thought I, that's the only thing I, I really relate with. And the breathing, yeah. like I said, the stretching and the breathing, and it's really hard to do that as well, like breathing from my stomach as opposed to breathing from here. Because yeah. the first few weeks, it was that anxiety of what's there, and I'll go up out or something, and I'll be like breathing like really fast. And then um, one of my friends, Bibi's on, this, she had a panic attack in one of the supermarkets she went to. Oh, bless her. And people were coming to help me. She was like, no, it's not me. You know, pissing myself as well at the same time as going, oh my goodness, how do you, you know, deal with that? And you've got anxiety or, you know, panic attack as it is anyway. Yeah. Um, definitely, I think it definitely helps, right? Yeah, my anxiety hasn't been too bad, funnily enough. It's obviously I get quite anxious shopping, but I think everybody gets kind of anxious shopping right now. Um, and I, I don't, the thing was for me, for my anxiety was always like, oh no, the worst thing's going to happen you know what what's the you know and always like worst case scenario but and I feel like we're living in the worst case scenario so I don't actually get that anxious absolutely like, right absolutely right right how's your masala looking yeah good getting yeah. there mine's, mine's, pretty much much done. mine's pretty much done but again just because your mind's done does it different seasons different produce like onions some mm -hmm. potatoes sometimes it takes 10 minutes sometimes it can take forever to to, to boil an onion a potato or cook an onion off but my masala is yeah. ready just to show peaks at home 
nice rich masala mm. there. Can we see your sook? I think mine's too watery. Is it too Hold watery? On. So raise, raise the heat a little. You can't see it, but I feel like it's really watery. Can't really I'm see gonna... raise, the, raise your heat a little to evaporate the water off. Yeah. Yeah? It's definitely getting there. Okay, so I'll wait for you to see them join up with that and then... So your um, tour has been postponed then, has it? Yeah, so we're looking at kind of autumn, but then I think a lot of venues don't really know what's going on either. So it's it's a kind of control freak's worst nightmare, what's going on. And I'm, I'm a bit of a control freak. So yeah. not knowing is always the worst, like not knowing. I'd rather just have the bad news. Um, so not knowing is always worse. So I guess like autumn, and then we'll see kind of what happens on the acting side of things, like whether people start, you know, casting things or producing things again, or when kind of, production kind of gets going and then on the writing side I've been doing bits and pieces but to be honest I'll be on most of my time I've just been um Alan oh hello um I don't need paid shows because I've got a tour <laughs> and I want you to come and see me live um because it's much better than me doing it in my kitchen yeah and you can see the reaction isn't it otherwise yeah. it's a bit one way and you don't get lots of, people, lots of people love doing I know lots of comedians love doing like you know gigs over zoom and stuff like that i i honestly i'd rather eat glass like i really i, I hate the thought of it because i can't see people there's always a bit of a delay as well isn't it you know yeah. and then yeah so and then imagine my mum coming in and interfering with that as... <laughs> <laughs> yeah can you just taste this yeah it's all right yeah, you just... <laughs> that's it that's it she um she was already like when i was prepping this she was like what are you doing and I was telling her about it and I was like, it's, and she was like, and where is it? I said, it's online. And she was like, okay. So she was like, um, what are you going to make? And then she got really involved in it. And then she, and then I said, oh, I said, oh, I'm probably just going to have rugby with it. And, um, and she was like, oh, she said, won't you lose marks for that though? I was like, it's not a competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. Cookery competition. Um, so, so if you're using tin chickpeas, have you drained them and they're ready? Yeah, I've drained them. They're drained and washed. Okay. Okay, Bye, so hopefully everyone who is um, on there. If anyone's got any questions, please do um, pop them in the um, comments there. I've been told to show them as I love. As you can see, you know, the colours change. It's become nice and thick. That's a, the sign of a good masala, right? A nice little paste that we have there. Have you got to that stage I'm now? I'm there now. So I'm ready. My masala's ready now. The recipes are on my website, www.thelittleindiankitchen.com. Somebody's asked there. Otherwise, I do try and post them on my um, Instagram and Facebook as well. But obviously, just juggling kids. And I've started doing um, some local food deliveries as well. So just juggling everything, which is life, right? Life carries on. You yeah. have to try and carry on. You have to try and make things work. Um, okay, so we're at the stage with the masala, right? Yeah. Okay, right. Get your chane chickpeas and let's pop that. Actually, you can give it a taste first if you want. Mm. Tomatoes are going through. In with, the, in with the chickpeas now, guys. And this is a great dish to freeze as well. I mean, say if you, you wanted to do a batch cook, you can freeze this as well and it'll be absolutely fine. So mix in the chickpeas. So the chickpeas are actually cooked. So the next this next stage doesn't take long at all. We're literally just warming it through and letting all the flavours come together and you'll be absolutely fine. Everybody's okay up to there? Good. At the beginning, what went into the masala? <laughs> Cumin seeds, onion, ginger, garlic, tomatoes. Cook it all down now. And then you've got a nice masala. They're very simple masala, but very nice. Um, can we use jana masala? Do you mean the powder for, Miru? I don't know what you mean by that, because this is a jana masala dish. And the masala is obviously the, the tomato base that we've cooked through. Are you okay up to where we've got to, um, Sook? Yeah. I used to make this dish all the time when I lived in London and I really miss my mum. So um, I used to make it all the time. 
So food and is it's just of memories, right? I mean, you could take yeah, you could transport absolutely. you back to a holiday or a, a time in childhood, and generally it's happy mm -hmm. times. I mean, we show our love and affection through food, as we know. Yeah, um, well, I'm very so that's nice. That's nice to think of general masala like that. Um, I like it quite thick and gloopy like so, but if you do want to add a bit of water to just let the masala all come together, you can add a dash of water. I put my water in my tin of tomatoes. Absolutely. Because... I did that when I put them in the processor and added that. Absolutely. Waste not, want not. We always do. Okay. And then you put a bit of water in like you did there. And then give it a nice stir and cover it again and a few more minutes and we have a jenna masala ready is this how you do yours or how would you how would you do your, um, your it's the same ingredients but i do the i do the onion first and then oh. i do the garlic okay and then i do the ginger because i don't want the uh, gin, uh garlic to burn okay so that's the only thing and also this is probably like a bit, this is a bit of a shortcut. And I did this a lot when I was living on my own. Um, I would do most of this and then, um, or like use like onion. And then I just use like a jar. Sorry. But I used to just <laughs> use like a jar, a jar of like tikka masala or something or like half a jar or something. Um, yeah, yeah. Just because it was easier and it was really quick and it was comforting. And I'd have it with pita bread. Oh, fair enough. Pita breads are great, aren't they? Proper student food. You can yeah, yeah. Them. I used to turn them into little pizzas <gasps> under the grill with cheese and stuff. Put them in pizza base. Right, gotta masala. Do you guys make your own? Yep, make our own. We just we just made. Um, here it is in an old uh, peanut butter jar. <laughs> no allergies in your house then. <laughs> <laughs> My mum keeps those in a little garlic chip jar, garlic chips um, container. Top secret. Um, but yeah, but all, we all make our own gada masala, right? It's, it's a bit more yeah. coarser than the shop-bought one. And the smell, the flavour is totally it's different to shop-bought. Um, and it's like, oh my God, you would, you'd never use shop-bought gada masala, right? In our, in our yeah. homes, no. So, shame of it. Shame of it. You should, do, you do, do you talk about how to make that and stuff in your blog? For people who uh, want to kind of no, make it? Really. I, I, I sort of do these the ingredients. I mean, I wish I had more time, so, to be honest with you, to do all the in-depth hours it takes to put up things and what have you. And obviously the kids mm -hmm. are still young. So one day, you know, I mean, slowly getting there, do, trying to do as much as I can. But um, going mm -hmm. to Masala is one of the things you learn from your grand grandmother sort of thing. Yeah. Hopefully, if there's, I mean, our grandmother's not no longer with us, but I used to rock, watch for doing it. We used to use this old mm -hmm. big method a raw tying thing and bash it by hand and, and then one, like, make they, one now yeah we make one thing we make like a whole two massive yeah. drum they say or big two big massive pots of it sort of thing so um yeah for sure we don't you know skimp on that sort of stuff okay just gonna give it another stir do you ever get so sick of cooking that you're just like let's just have a cheese board Rohit loves cheese you've just read my husband's mind he absolutely <laughs> loves cheese um, we do actually, we do this like um, smorgasbord type of thing and we put a bit of whatever's lying around, a bit of farta, a bit of cheese, a bit of crackers, a bit of cucumber, a bit of, you know, meats mm -hmm. and whatever and, and just, just have that and sometimes in a nice glass of red wine or something like that and just to chill. Yeah, we do. So we do do that sometimes mm -hmm. as well. And that way it's like a fridge raid. You get rid of everything in the fridge as well. Yeah. Um, That's my favorite kind of cooking as well, like, um, like ready, steady cook types cooking. Yeah. Um, which is always like, I love that. I used to love that show. Um, yeah. It was brilliant, wasn't it? It'd be like, here's some risotto rice, here's a pepper and an old shoe. Like, it was like, what are you going to make out of it? Loved it. But they do have a lot of stuff in the store cupboard, which they yeah. all sort of, you know, um, use as well. <laughs> it's neat done now, actually. Okay, so great. Together. So the last thing that goes in is the garam masala we just spoke about. So sprinkle that on top. Give it a stir. I'm going to keep the lid off mine for a second because I think yeah, it's no, a bit keep the lid off now. That's absolutely fine. Let it all evaporate. So you've got a nice chana masala consistency like this. If you want it a bit watery, you can feel free to add some more water. But I like to keep mine like so. And it, and it, this is so versatile. You can have it with rice. You can have it with roti. You can have it with brontas. I use yes. it for some more chaat. You know, oh, yes. or, a, or a little Buddha bowl of chana masala with salad and bits and pieces. Again, fridge rate sort of stuff. And it's absolutely mm -hmm. delicious. So, just 
just going to get a bit ready to place it up. Do you, coriander, oh God, big fan or not? Huh? You a fan of coriander or not? Yeah, I love it. I love it, thankfully. I know that some people think that it um, tastes like soap. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan. I obviously don't have any in, but I'm too scared to go to the cash and carry. Yeah. To get, to get some. And it's I'm fresh, right? I mean, obviously, nowadays, with the lockdown frozen, I'll have to do, but fresh coriander, mm. you can't beat it. And um, you have people who either love it or hate it, even in our family, actually. But we always keep a little portion out for them without it in. Do you grow um, any of your own herbs? Excuse me? Do you grow any of your own herbs? Oh, I love herbs, yeah. I've got um, rosemary, thyme, sage. Mm -hmm. The thing with coriander, because it, it, it just grows, it's got a short time, time frame to yeah. sort of eat it once it's grown. It doesn't really last that long. But when we were growing up, my grandma, bless, my dad used to grow, plant his roses. BG, my grandmother used to just scatter some coriander seeds within the roses and then be yeah. like... That's what my gran used to do. Just yeah. right, like she, she, that's what my gran used to do. And when she'd be making her masala, you know, when they're like sorting through spices, and if there was something that wasn't didn't belong in there, she'd chuck it into the garden. And like a few weeks later, we'd be like, "What is this?" Um, <laughs> like she was really green fingered. It's okay, so I've plated mine up. I'm gonna get a plate. With the fresh coriander. You ready? Got a plate. What are you having this with? What are we having this with? What are you having it with? Um, well, we're just going to have roti. I tried to talk my mum into a paranta and she was like, we're all going to get indigestion. Don't be stupid. So, because <laughs> we're eating it at night. Um, so we're going to have roti. And I was like, look, I said, what? I said, Lorna's asked me to make roti so that we can like taste it together. And with roti, and she was like, what, like, and then she got really involved and I was like, do you know what, just, just do oh, whatever I'm you want, like. absolutely. So this is Chana Masala, yours ready? Let's have a look, it's amazing. Just to show peeps what we've done. We're going to have a prawn here, so this is the kids' dinner sorted and our dinner sorted for tonight. Um, yeah, it has worked well. Ta-da! <laughs> well, <laughs> <we're at Christmas. laughs> yours is amazing, why does yours have Okay, so we're gonna do our little tasting now. Our little blue Peter moment, right, sir? Oh, yeah, except that I didn't do mine. Sorry. Show me your roti. I didn't make it. My mum wouldn't let me. She was like, I want it fresh. She said, I don't want you to make it an hour before. So, this is one I made earlier, our blue Peter moment. So, if you just take a little taste and then. I'll eat it on its own. You're gonna eat it on its own. I was a bit skeptical. I thought it would take longer, but that is that is ready to go. That is absolutely ready to go. So it is really quick. And again, it's the technique of covering, letting it sauté yeah. off. Um, and then, you really know what you're doing, you? thank you very much. Have you got any, any <laughs> questions? Or something? have you got any questions? Mine actually looks like no, that. I can't believe it. Well done. John, what's your friend's name? Hannah. Yeah, well, drunken women solving. I can't believe it. She's made it and it looks like that. <laughs> so yeah, definitely <laughs> use this as a base guideline for um, recipes or, you know, it, curries and you're off and away and you can start experimenting and adding a few of the flavours here and there and there you go. Yeah. Totally bomb. Yeah. Um, yeah, but obviously classic way to eat is Jenna Masala with pature or puri and the fried breads, but obviously we're, yeah. we're going to go a bit healthy with chapati and... Um, Bronte, bronte, bronte. I mean, I, I probably won't. I probably will get the grahi out and I probably will make the pudding on her. Um, oh, brilliant. Go for it. Go for <laughs> thank, it. thank you so, so much. much. Um, been lovely chatting to you and cooking along with you and hopefully we'll um, catch up soon. Quite a few people yeah. are having Jenna Masala tonight now. That's brilliant. And well done, Chris. So my friend Chris is like really new to cooking. Um, he mm -hmm. makes a really good dal now. Like he started off with that. And yeah, like a really good dal and jar as well. So now he's like, I was like, you have to join us. And this is like, honestly, this is the best part of it for me is when people who don't really cook or are a bit kind of uncomfortable with cooking or a bit unsure that they're Absolutely. kind of cooking along. So Absolutely. lovely.
and, and obviously watching somebody do it and seeing the layers and everything, it, it, you, you yeah. can, you know, see it a bit better and explain it a bit better. The recipe will be on my Instagram. We'll share it from there. And Davina, no, it doesn't go well with donuts. You can have the donuts for pudding. <laughs> <laughs> He's been ba making them every day since, I think. Amazing. That's yeah, on yeah. my list of things. So thank you so much. I've loved thank it. Thank you, my love. Speak to you soon. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.